Now, once you have been authenticated to a system, you are ready to gain access to resources. This is access control, defining how and what specifically an entity can do with the resources on a network. There are several concepts that we deal with when talking about access control. The first is mandatory access control. Under a mandatory access control scheme, all resources and their access requires authorization. Now, this always hasn't been the case. Many computer systems you could simply walk up to and begin to use, get access to files, make changes to data, use a printer. It's only been in the past 10 or 15 years that we've really moved towards this idea of linking specific subsets of permissions to entities on a network. Once we start enforcing mandatory access control, we can start to talk about discretionary access control. Discretionary access control is really founded on two basic principles. And if you've ever used a computer system, these probably seem almost common sense. But in reality, this was a major breakthrough in the concepts and ideas of security. The first is that access is restricted based on user or group identity. In other words, based on who you were, either as an individual user account or a collection of resource or entities known as a group, defined what you could do to a resource. Discretionary access control also means that the entities, those users or groups, have the discretion to pass along the information to other parties or other entities. Let me give you a practical example of how this would work. Let's say you've got a file server, and that file server is going to store documents and files for a group of users who work together. Now, wouldn't it be nice if the person who creates a document could choose what permissions and which individuals or which groups in that work group can get access to that document? This is an important development, and it took a while to be reached both in terms of concepts and understanding as well as technical implementation. 